it's not bad, is it? I'm not gonna lie. I'm uh, really, really impressed. All right, Michael, what are we doing today? All right, today we're gonna to try something a little bit different. A lot of you will already be familiar with Nathan's XG Falcon, the car that we rolled in here the other day and did a little mini mod makeover type thing in it and made it cool. Quick one day build. Quick one day build. Uh, it's a very, very clean car, but it still has its imperfections. And one of those imperfections is the grill here on the speakers, like many, Probably X series or X, what, X, X series in general, yeah. XD, XE, XE, XF. XDs. They've all XG. been cracked here because I reckon there's been a lot of knees or a lot of feet that have gone into here. And all people have tried to put bigger speakers and push them on and yeah, broke them. But the issue is you can't get any good ones because they're all gone and you don't find them anymore and you can't buy a new one. So today we're going to see if we can make our own. At least they're easy to get out. Oh uh, yeah, you usually got to drop that, but because this one's all broken. Oh, it's just going to come straight out. It's just going to fall straight out. Too many Sony explodes in these things. That's what's done it. That mount's broken, that mount's broken. Ah, I see. Or well, someone's tried to rip it out and they've they've broken it. Yeah. But there you go, sir. She's yeah, looking a Sony... bit sad. Oh, even snapped on the side and everything, this one. Yeah, she's quite far gone. She's a bit of a sad one, this one. Yeah. Cup holders good, though. Cup holders are mint. Hold my coffee. Okay. So, this is the part that we want to replicate today. As you can see, it's just your basic plastic sort of cover with a grill in it. Uh, it looks fairly simple, but there's a lot of complex structures to it. So, if we're trying to make another one of these, yes, you could draw it in CAD and draw it all up, but it's a fairly complex structure as far as everything going on. You've got like a plane there on this way, then you've got a curve, then you've got this little cutout and relief here, you've got your grill, and then you've got this funny looking wing ding thing here that comes off the side here. That's all very difficult to measure and actually put into CAD. The easiest way to go about actually getting this into CAD would be to 3D scan it. Now you guys have been fairly familiar with our 3D scanner that we've had of recent, the Raptor Pro X, which we've used to scan like the cup holders. We used to scan the Therana a couple of times to get all that data and put it all into CAD and it's been really, really awesome. But Corality have actually released a new version and that is the Sermon S1. This is pretty much the Raptor X Pro with a few upgrades to it. I'm not gonna lie, I have already played with it because I couldn't resist and I couldn't wait. And I'm really impressed with it so far. It is a really, really capable machine and it's even faster than the Raptor already was. I think the Raptor did like 60 frames a minute. This can do 90 frames a minute, which means scanning is much quicker. This is it. As you can see, I've already had it open and I've already played with it a bit. All right, so we've got everything set up. If you wanna go look at how you set one of these things up, you can go back to our previous video where I do the calibration on the Raptor. It's all pretty much exactly the same as this, so we're just gonna go straight into it and see if this thing works. So as we said, we're gonna scan this, but we're not gonna scan this one. The reason why is because I did say they were really rare, but if there's one thing that Nathan's really good at, it's collecting a lot of rare things and keeping them for himself. So Nathan, if you wouldn't mind, <coughs> this is from Nathan's XE. <laughs> the other parts car, the Fairlane and the XC, are both becoming parts cars for the XG. So we do have one already, and we're gonna use this one. The reason why is because this one is intact. There's no damage to it. Because as you can see, this one is missing the brackets on the side, the bracket there, the bracket there, this one has it. So we're gonna scan this one because it's a better example and we're lucky that we have it. And then we're gonna hopefully try and reproduce it and replace that one. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. You would have seen us in the past put all the little markers all over these things. We don't wanna do that today. We're gonna try and do this by using these little markers that I've been playing with lately and they seem to do a decent job. Huh? Yeah, it's heaps faster. So, one thing that you'll notice as well too, if you remember in the last episode we spoke about this, we said that the scanners don't like the color black because black absorb light, so we would have to spray on the spray normally if we would try and scan this with an older model. Done a lot of work apparently and they've fixed that, so it doesn't need the spray anymore, which means I bought that can for nothing. See here, when I'm trying to get into this little like nook in here? Yeah. But this is with the parallel scan and it doesn't really get in there very well, or yeah. doesn't get the detail, so oh, it's slowly building it. But what they have got now, right, is you can go to single laser line, look at that. And the single laser line is oh, made. Wow. Oh, look at it, Get it finds that corner. Yeah. So See how it's, it's highlighted that corner? Oh yeah. yeah. This is basically the main difference between this and the Raptor. It has this new function called single laser line setting, and basically it's meant for getting into all the nooks and crannies that you couldn't get before with all the other kinds of laser scanning methods and it's meant for getting into like deep holes or whatever and it'll get all that detail that you couldn't get before and i found this really really useful and like even across here 
See how it builds that? Yeah. It wouldn't build that before, did it? No. So what we've done is we've rotated it to get the backside. All right, we've made the scan. Now we're gonna join these two together because we've rotated it. So we have our scan data. And now what we need to do is we need to clean up that scan data. So what we do is we start to remove all the crap that we don't need. So once we hit fusion and we actually create the, the point cloud data, you end up with this. And you can see the actual texture that Ford put in from factory in this. That, well, what do you call that? Like alligator skin, I guess, or? Uh, who knows? I don't know what that's called, but if someone can tell us what that texture is, I'd be very interested to know the name of it. But yeah, you sort of get the look of it. Very nice. How detailed it is. So now we're gonna try and join this scan and this scan as one. And the way that we do that is we try and find where they have the same thing. One mark, one mark. Then we look for another piece that it would share the same data. Um, one mark, two marks, three marks, three marks. And then all we do is we let the computers do all the work for us. We hit a line and then we end up with- Wow, that's impressive. A solid piece. And that yeah, is basically funny. our final piece. That looks good. So that is that whole thing in CAD and, and what is known as a, a watertight model because there's no holes. Which means we should be able to print directly from this by putting this straight into our printer and coming up with the results. Not bad, huh? Yeah, looks killer. Pretty good detail. It's amazing how it fills in all the blanks. So this was my first almost successful print with ASA and it was looking really good. I printed it this way, right up to the point where it cracked here, unfortunately, as it started to cool off. Uh, I kind of expected it to do that because this is a really hard print to print because of the fact that it is so big and it is so thin. This is only three mil walls, so it wasn't really ideal. So then I ended up printing like that and I ended up getting more cracking on the way up and I realized this isn't gonna work either. Which made me realize that ASA and ABS was not gonna be suitable to try and print this thing. Which meant that I had to turn to a different sort of material. Now that material that I turned to is called PCCF, polycarbonate carbon fiber. And in just one print, I was able to get a piece that looked like this. It looks just about perfect. There's no warping, there's no cracking. It looks really, really good. And I ended up being able to print it like this, which meant that it was only about a seven hour print time, which I was pretty happy about. Only issue that I did find with it, as it was coming across the top here and started to print upwards, this area here was cooling off and lifting slightly, which ended up leaving us with this sort of grainy structure here as it came around this radius. I took a bit of sandpaper to it to try and clean that up and see if I could take it out. And I reckon I can. If I spend a little bit of time doing it, as you can see, it stands up really, really well. So you could definitely save this piece. Maybe hit it with a bit of high filler and then paint it and it would be just about as good as the original. But again, I feel like we can improve on this. Is there even a better way of printing it? And that might be standing it up like that. That way this surface area doesn't touch any base plate. This radius won't get that grainy feature. And we should end up with an even better result and a result that doesn't require any work afterwards, which again, that's the whole idea of this. We want to create something that doesn't need any work. So that's exactly what I did. I tried printing it upright and I'm about to pull the result out of the printer now. All right, so this is version number five or six, I think. I don't even know at this stage, but it's looking uh, very promising already. Straight away, that top radius is really, really nice. There's no fraying, there's no issues there whatsoever. Everything in it looks really good. So let's take it out and see what it looks like. Now comes the fun part, trying to remove all of this support material. Now printing it this way, the downside is it costs a lot of filament. And this filament is not cheap, so that kind of sucks, but it does look like it has given us a better result. That's a lot of support material. Now the reason why this is so scary is because this was a 15 hour long print. And I really don't want to have to wait another 15 hours to see if this is going to work or not. All right, so we have our printed pieces and Nathan's come to have a look at it for the first time. What do you think? I think it's incredible. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? I'm not gonna lie. I'm uh, 
really, really impressed. Not bad, huh? That was my first attempt. Do you want to see the actual attempt? Yeah. The better attempt? Oh, wait, hang on. This isn't the, the that's not, one. That's not the good one. Oh, what the hell? This is the good one. Holy shit! <laughs> Dude. So that's straight off the printer, no mods, no nothing. I thought that was it, and I was like, oh, okay, I can paint that and make that look... Holy, I don't even have to paint that! No. That's inc I thought this was it, because I was like, hang on, he sent me a photo of this one, you said you did another one. Yeah. That's incredible. Holy crap. Oh, let's put it in. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, look at that crappy, crappy broken piece right there. I know. It falls out. Well, it's got no tabs on it, that's why. <laughs> Alright, let's take this thing out. The question is... Are there tabs remaining? Yeah, they are. They're still there. So the screws are there too? Hopefully. Is that lined up perfectly? Does it? Does it actually touch? It's touching perfectly, dude. Now when I upgrade these speakers, I'm going to break the tab. Yeah. Oh, shit. I feel like if, if we're going to make a few of these, we're going to have to make like a removable tab for people that want to put run big Sony Explodes. Yeah. People like Nathan and his P-Plater spec. Utes. <laughs> hey, I love being a P-Plater again. I feel like it. The colour match actually isn't bad from a raw material. I mean, you could paint it, but I mean, it looks pretty close. I ain't painting it, brother. It looks like every other piece of plastic that doesn't match that exactly. came from Ford. Dude, that looks so good. How good is that? You wouldn't even know. <laughs> Just imagine when you're trying to put this in your hands up and go <laughs> straight into the grill. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I need another one. <laughs> oh, that's mint, man. Happy with that? Yeah. Not bad, huh? That piece didn't exist. You could have that, or you could have that, that, or that. Mate, that colour is so good, honestly. <laughs> That's so good. All in all, great success. Great success. The point of this whole little project was we wanted to try and do something a little bit different. And what we were trying to do was we wanted to set a challenge. And that challenge was, could we, using the technology now that we have in the shed with stuff like our 3D scanner and our 3D printer, could we use that technology to sort of replicate a piece of something in the car that you can no longer buy or yep. find in no decent part. condition anymore. Yeah. Yep. And we set out because we thought, you know what, this is a great example of something that a lot of people would have broken in their cars and it's something that you're never going to find anyone remake anymore because no one's going to spend the time or money to make injected, molded, replicated parts of these things. Could we do it using our 3D printer? We knew that with a 3D printer we could. We just had to figure out how we are going to print it. But the biggest thing was, how do we get that information into CAD to actually be able to print it? This thing did an incredible job of picking up every little minute detail on that same thing. Because remember, just like the Raptor Pro, these things scan down to 0 0.02 of a mil, less than a human hair. I know people are going to say that you could repair this little plastic thing. You know, a lot of people do plastic repairing and such like that. And yes, you could. But that's not the point of what we're trying to show in this video or what we're trying to challenge ourselves to do. We wanted to see whether we could make an entire piece of not just this, it could be anything. The, the skills that we learned from this and using the 3D scanner means that we can apply that sort of skill set to anything. to anything, basically. These scanners are incredible little bits of kit. We've used them in various ways now already. We've, we've used, used it almost every episode. Yeah. <laughs> we've used it. If you've been watching recently, we've used it every episode. Yeah. Big thank you for Creality for sending out their new Sermon S1. It's a really good bit of kit. I loved the Raptor Pro. The Raptor Pro was amazing, but this thing is that and more. The single line scanning in this thing, where you can really scan mm. into the intricate details, it's going to be a massive help, especially when building, because I'm looking at it right now, that 253 over there, being able to scan into the ports themselves and get that detail is going to be a huge advantage. Anyway, we just thought we'd uh, show you our new tool and um, we'll catch you when we've got something else to show. <laughs> 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 One click automatic head repair. Is that gonna fix my my head? What if it made you look pretty? Am I not pretty <laughs> enough? All right, let's scan me. We're gonna make a Nathan doll. You can what? buy these and put them on your dash. We can do a Hawaii skirt as well, and then I can be a little girl. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the scan. As you can see, his face looks a bit weird because he probably was laughing and smiling too much, and I was probably messing with him, so that probably didn't help. But have a look at his jumper. His jumper actually came out really, really well. Look at the detail in it. That's crazy. It's the Mexico flag. Yeah, and then if you go around the back... That's incredible. What the hell? That not, actually picked that up way good. Not bad. Now, you have to remember Nathan was moving a lot as well too, which is why it's a little bit janky, but not bad, huh, considering. But that's Nathan in a video game form, basically. That's incredible. Hi, I'm Nathan, and I like Falcons. Especially <laughs> Turbo ones. <laughs>